I'm SirTapTap and welcome to Galaxy The Dimensional. Review copy this game is provided by the developer. So let's go ahead and start on a decent difficulty level. So the way this game works, sort of complicated. I'll let you watch the little intro here. Well, middle of the game, not intro. Isn't he familiar? Game. Loading times are a little heavier than I'd expect. Um, there's honestly some technical issues still in the game. There, the game's had a couple patches. The game still has some hitching issues that uh, significant enough to get me damaged a few times. Uh, I think they fixed most of the sound issues. Wars are won by men taking direct action, lass. Action and bloody combat. We're just one ship. We should avoid everyone we possibly can. We take the shortest route. Cut through the middle of Imperial space. But that will take us through the thick of combat and straight into pirate territory. Sir, ATAC reporting for duty. Are you ready to attack those blue-faced Imperial slugs head on? Am I ever, sir? It's too much of a risk. Enough, lass. But... I outrank you. My ship... My rules! I'll go work on our defenses. We're gonna need them. Your crazy plan. Pilot, are you ready for a mission? Sure am glad it's you out there, <coughs> talk and not me. <laughs> Giant bugs like that give me the heebie-jeebies. So yeah, this game is... They call it a roguelike. I don't entirely accept that label, but it is definitely procedurally generated, including hey, the objectives of almost like all of these. Some of my lucky crash coins while you were out. Let me take those off your hands first. So yeah, the game has a few systems of persistent and less persistent rewards. And we can't buy anything very interesting here. So uh, I'll explain the laser upgrades in a bit. Um, so. The way this game works is there are seasons and episodes. You have to complete a season made of five episodes or levels in order to save the fact that you beat that season. If you die in the middle of a season, you have to redo the whole thing. Uh, an exception is if you get five or ten crash tokens, which just drop randomly from enemies. So you can do a retry on the mission you died on. So it honestly plays more like arcade than... Uh, Roguelike. The legendary bug, White Tusk. Yes, sir, I did. Well, it's your lucky day. I found you a whole cave full of us. You can relive the memory of the battle. Uh, lucky me. One of Atok's things is that he's scared of bugs, which is kind of funny because bugs are by far the weakest enemies in the game. Though the game has, um, it has its use for bugs. Enemies, there's three different factions. The Imperials, the Raiders, and the Bugs. And anything from another faction will fight the other factions just as much as you. So you can trick enemies into fighting space bugs and stuff and get your pot shots in there. A lot of Raiders for a bug mission. So it's pretty fun to make them infight and stuff. Stupid asteroid. The movement in this game is fairly complex. Well, it's actually not that... It's not that complicated, but it's very... It has its, you know, depth in how you use it. It's uh, not quite like Asteroids. Got a little blueprint there. So... Okay. So, movement. You move with... There, you point your ship with the left stick, and that's how you... You know, that's the direction you shoot. It's also the direction you go if you go forward. I did not mean to bring that up. Uh, you can also reverse, and you have a boost, which you can boost forward or you can boost backwards, and you can also strafe with this lateral movement, and you can boost that way too. So this has a lot of movement possibilities. You can also juke, which uh, lets you jump over stuff. Can't jump over that. But yeah, you can jump over enemy shots and stuff. I should probably go do my mission, but whatever. I guess we're going to go fight these guys first. The game's seasons ramp up in difficulty quite significantly. That is why I did not start at the very beginning of the game, because Season 1 is crazy easy and it's going to be really boring. Honestly, Season 3 is going to be pretty easy for me, but uh, it's a decent challenge. Season 4 is where things start to get real. 
Uh, there's five seasons. Season five is not out yet, unfortunately. It is not an episodic game. Like, it's not sold in parts. Season five just happened to not make it to release, and they're going to release it as a free, you know, upgrade. Or a free uh, update. So, as you can see, bugs, pathetic. Aw, oh, these guys. I hate these. Um, generally, laser upgrades. So, one of the roguelike elements is these upgrades that we get here, like this laser upgrade. Anything that reduces your fire rate is freaking terrible and uh, never worth it. It's very frustrating. The laser upgrades, there's like a single best one in every single category. It's like if you have the assault muzzle, the spread shot, or the spread pellet, the auto fire pattern, the bounce shot, and the super cool bullets, that's like the absolute best in all situations and there's no reason to not use those if you have them and it's pretty frustrating because there's a lot of options but those are really the only good options like many of the options are actually worse than the default because anything with low fire rate lowers your damage per second uh, even things that increase the damage per bullets will still reduce your dps because you're hitting the enemy that much less and there's no damage reduction or anything, so there's no reason to not favor high damage per second. Parker. Oh, right, the menu. I almost forgot to show you. The menu is amazing, and, it, you know, um... If we... Parker, seriously! Just sit down. Uh, it also has, you know... If you ever used a CRT, this should all be very familiar. I love the VHS paused effect at the top there. Uh, there's some very nice touches that make this feel very, you know, 80s anime-ish. The visuals, for sure, and that, that menu is glorious. Um, <laughs> the enemy chatter is pretty good. The actual chatter from Atak, our hero here, and the story cutscenes, not so great. Like, the very first cutscene and the one where we get the mech are pretty good. The rest... Uh, the writing kind of holds it back from being really feeling like a nice super campy 80s anime so that's kind of a shame also speaking of an 80s anime uh since it's a you've got a spaceship and it's the 80s obviously there's a button that turns it into a robot that's just how these things work i guess we've already cleared out this asteroid so yeah the mech uses this laser sword as you might expect it has a charge attack it has a shield instead of the juke um, it's a close range fighter only, and it's very risky. It'll kill enemies faster than the ship in most situations, but it'll also die faster. <coughs> I tend to prefer the ship because of that. Uh, but the mech has its uses, it's very fun to use, it's just a, a bit risky to use. Uh, there's a lot of different opinions on the mech, some people almost only use the mech, some people avoid it. I fall sort of in the middle, but I tend to avoid it. I will use it from time to time. And I'll definitely use it to show it off here. The problem with the mech is that when things are going well, they go very well. And the moment they stop going well, you can take hull damage. Oh, I should explain that. Shields recharge. Like, I have two shields here and only three hull, hull points remaining. Taking hull damage is super crazy bad and, like, can add up to kill you over the whole season. So, like, damn it. And the enemy AI is actually pretty good. So like, I brought that guy's shields and now he's a little timid. I'm actually not sure why he died. Oh yeah, and once we kill things we get more salvage, which is just plain money for the shop. Where am I going? Okay. You can bring up this map at any time. There's also this database which lets you see what, what equipment we have now, our boring mission objective. All these unlocks and has these little lore explanations for all the enemies so that's kind of nice um yeah shields and hull so taking hull damage generally the game is not super crazy difficult moment to moment but little mistakes add up because hull it's not easy to repair hull damage like it, it costs money or you have to find very rare random pickups for it so you have to be really careful to not lose your hull points because you might end up like at a final boss and have like one hull point 
and then maybe you can only make like one mistake in that boss fight. So it's a pretty important aspect of that. You might notice I'm completely ignoring my objective. There are, well there's another one over here anyway. There's a certain number of chests that have upgrades and stuff in them, and the upgrades are random. But you basically want to get all of those in every level before you actually do the objectives. Because when you beat the objectives or go to the warp point, there's going to be more enemies. So you just kind of want to get your upgrades as fast as possible. Oh, this guy's a fun little environmental hazard. Uh, let's not... Crap! I didn't want to trigger him, but yeah. When you see those things, you can actually trick enemies or throw them directly into the uh, path of those things, and that's a pretty nice way to defeat people. Uh, see, as we can see here, health, pretty expensive, 200 points. Bigot tank is a good upgrade. See, so yeah, we don't want blast, or blast fire is pretty bad. Oh, the mech also has a shield. The shield has its separate health, like you have your normal all-hit shield, and then you have this directional shield, which has its own auto-regenerating health. And the shield is very useful for like, damn it. You should really just run away. I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. You should really run away when your uh, shields are down. Ugh. Also, damn it, I... Transforming out of the ship is, or out of the robot, it's kind of awkward, because if you try to, if you have a charge slash, it will not immediately let you transfer back. So that was incredibly poorly played, but that's, you know, how a standard mission plays out, if you suck. Um, as you might be able to tell, performance, definitely not a solid 60 frames per second yet. Um, it's not usually super bad or anything, it's not like triple A third party game bad frame rate. But, uh, I definitely hope they have another patch here. I'm not sure what that item I just got is, actually. That's the first time I've gotten that. Let me see here. No. There we go. Oh. That's not actually very exciting at all. Oh well. <laughs> but yeah, the... The controls... Let me say this. I absolutely hate how Asteroids controls. I know it's a classic, but I freaking hate that style of control. This game has very great controls. It may seem superficially similar, it is very much not. You have way, way more control over where you're moving. You can cancel your momentum in less than a second. Um, you have very little momentum left over when you stop. It's very not space-like movement, but it's very enjoyable movement, and it leads to some very tense firefights. Ugh, these things. One of the safer things to do is just fly backwards and shoot directly at an enemy. Uh, you're not always going to be able to do this, but it's one of the safer tactics. And especially with Juke, you can just hop right over things. Oh, there's our adrenaline. I guess that was slightly useful. But yeah, movement feels really great, and it's responsible for most of the depth of the combat. The combat in this game is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, definitely the high point, which I guess is to be expected. <coughs> Technical issues, kind of a bummer. It's kind of a bummer also that the, the uh, writing and... You know, the, the writing and story aspects of the 90s anime feel, or the 80s anime feel, don't really deliver. It has some nice style, especially visually, but uh, I think it holds it back a little bit from what I was kind of hoping for. Like, even just a nice campy story could have been interesting, but it's fairly limited. And I think part of that may just be because of the procedural generation. Four out of five episodes in a season are going to be, you know, procedurally generated goal, and they're fairly boring. Like, what's this? This target needs to be taken out. See, that's all the dialogue we get for this one. And so we're just gonna go beat up this guy. And yeah, the store is really bad. I... It's really unfortunate because your gear is limited to what the game randomly gives you and what's in the store. And the store has a really bad habit of giving you almost the same items almost all the time. 
It gives you repair, it gives you more missiles, it gives you engine buffs, it gives you like one or two laser parts, and those are the only interesting things most of the time. Sometimes it will give you interesting things like uh, shield overcharge is an extremely good item. I need you to take out the marked target. Roger, who is it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> then why are we attacking them? Just trust me. Uh, right, sir. Oh my god, you idiot. Okay, so with the mech, you can grab onto stuff. This guy managed to grab the spiky side, or the, the shocky side of this. This thing can be used to instantly drop the shields on an enemy and stun them, which is nice. Um, but it's kind of too risky to fuss with those stupid shield droppy things. Ah, salvage is one of the worst um, random chests to find. The upgrade ones are the best. Ow. Ugh, you really shouldn't be taking damage as often as I am. I'm <laughs> playing pretty poorly, and I'm sorry. But, uh... Damn it. No! So yeah, like I said before, enemies will attack each other if they're different factions, so... You can use that to pretty good effect. Though you're not always gonna find, you know, conveniently placed enemies to hit each other, to hit others with. <laughs> Genius. The AI is usually pretty decent, but uh, when it's fighting enemies, it's like the AI is way better at fighting you than it is at fighting en other enemies, oddly enough. Like these space bugs are incredibly easy to kill as a player, but the AI will take so much damage from them for no reason. Yeah, here's that hitching I was talking about. The patch today was supposed to fix that. It might have reduced it, but it definitely didn't fix it. Oh, I want- I want to try that. Ah, whatever. What's... Oh, I was in the, uh, state that... What is that? The adrenaline state for a second, for some, uh, for some reason there. Yeah, Atok kind of talks too much with the, uh... Whenever he picks up crap or whenever he kills a bug, he does some comments and they're not very good. And he yes. makes them kind of way too often. So, another aspect of the roguelike stuff, um, there's only two things that unlock for your entire career. One is when you beat a season, you unlock the next season forever. Uh, another one is those blueprints unlock items that show up in the shop. Like I said, the shop is terrible, and you're probably not going to ever see those items more than once, like every two seasons or something ridiculous. But it is there. They are in the shop. And uh, so it's a nice little feeling to unlock all of those. I The shop really is a big problem in my opinion. Oh crap. I hate that tank thing. It's so unpredictable and it deals two damage if it explodes near you. Yeah, a problem is just the balance of the random items, or of the upgrades, is very poor. There are some items that are way, way better than most of the others. Um, the shop really limits you. And, um, well, other than that, the random items are pretty good. Like, there's just, it's really just the balance in the store that I have problems with on that end. And you do get upgrades, I'm not sure if we've seen many yet, but you do get upgrades just randomly in those chests, like we saw that salvage chest earlier. You can get laser upgrades or uh, ship upgrades in those, and that's... Very nice. That's generally why I seek those out, because I want, you know, more shields or whatever. Ah, there's two right in a row. Better ship means better chance of survival. Uh, anything that adds more health is generally very expensive and not super amazing. Like, the item we got there adds a permanent health, but it doesn't actually heal that health for us. We still have to pay for it. Like, the, the health, you know, is a very expensive resource, and all of the upgrades kind of show that. The, generally, you want shield upgrades over health almost any time. They're cheaper, they're far more effective, because we, you know, take a lot more shield damage than health damage. Unless you're incredibly bad. Which, I mean, I've been this is fairly poor play, to be quite honest. I did much better when I played through Season 4 uh, last time. 
So I'm kind of sorry you have to see some of the worst, some worse playing here, but... Season 3 is decently hard, Season 4 is significantly harder. The the difficulty ramps up significantly every season, so like Season 1, total cakewalk. Season 2, you know, starting to warm up. Season 3, fairly intense. Season 4, very intense. I'm looking forward to see how crazy Season 5 is. <coughs> also, due to tougher enemies dropping more money, and also the blueprints, you end up with better equipment by the end of the later seasons too. I'm not sure if there's more item drops, it feels like there's more, um, you know, upgrade drops and stuff too. So you should have a better ship by the end of the uh, later seasons too. Um, I, got, I went everywhere except for the objective. Oh hey, almost missed that. Disposable armor. So there's also disposable armor and disposable shields. Disposable armor, just one extra health point you can never repair. Disposable shield, you get to keep that extra shield point as long as your shields don't pop. Like, totally drain the shields. So those are very nice and uh, very intense because you might, you know, accidentally lose them when you don't want to and that's fairly frustrating. Also note the little targeting laser here, that's a nice touch. You might see that, whoop. Um, the little orange dot there shows where we're aiming towards. What you got for me, baby? Uh, this one isn't great. It's not terrible, though. Uh, it doubles the damage and reduces fire rate. It's one of the better items that reduce fire rate, because it does not... Um, most of them reduce fire rate to the point where the extra damage is not actually worth it. Like, the precision muzzle is quite bad. But, uh... This one, I think, may actually be a net positive. Um... I'm not certain about that. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. These guys do a two swing attack, so if you have two shields, you'll you'll take two damage from each hit, and so you'll take two health damage if both connect. Very, very dangerous. One thing you might want to do is rush towards them and juke over them. There we go. Yeah. So those are some of the more dangerous opponents in the game. Let's just double check to make sure there wasn't any items up here. And there was... Chip ability. That's what I want to see. Ah. Shield upgrades are great, except this one only activates when your shields get popped, which is a very bad situation. We're getting a lot of that hitching. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Let's try charge fire. Charge fire with huge blast, that's... Nice! Unfortunately, I don't have any enemies to use it on yet. The one thing the game always does is there's always a ship waiting for you when you try to warp out, so we're gonna have to deal with that, which is good in this case, because I want to see how much damage this thing does. Either that was already damaged, or this does crazy damage. It does at least five, but... Might deal more than that. Oh god. These things are fairly tough, so yeah. This would be a good test here. What?! Those things have a lot of health. This- Wow. Okay. This might actually be a viable alter alternative to super high fire rate stuff. So that's good to know. I guess maybe there more, there's more potential than I thought. Though... Like I was complaining about the, the item stuff, I mean, I've beaten four seasons, and there's still upgrades I haven't seen, and it's not entirely because there's just that many upgrades, I just tend to get a lot of the very same lame upgrades, which is a shame. Yes, Parker, you have clumps. Sorry, I'm grooming my cat here. Um, also, I like the enemy, you know, the enemies killed showing up on your ship at the results screen, that's a nice touch. Yeah, that is Galaxy. Um, the combat, very good. Um, it's just kind of a shame the writing doesn't, and the uh, roguelike elements are a little limited, and the performance is a little poor, but the, the combat itself really makes up for that in a big way. Sorry, Parker. I know, I know. Um, I really hope the technical issues are addressed. <clears throat> the writing, you know, isn't critical. I drank my own waste to stay alive in the deserts of Jazzo Tenor. 
I'd ever do. My biggest concern, though, is that I really don't see a huge um, incentive to play the game again after you've beaten it. It's still fun and everything, but it's not like Binding of Isaac, where there's just so much content, even if after you've beaten, you know, the chest or whatever. You still haven't even seen all of the bosses, you still haven't seen all of the floors, you still haven't seen all of these enemies and characters. It doesn't have quite that replayability. The first playthrough is very good, and you can still replay the next, you know, you can still replay the last level and play it as, um... And I mean, it'll still be new-ish, because it's... <clears throat> Uh, it is procedurally generated. Yes, sir. Great idea. I'll scavenge some up. Damn, this is crazy good. I can't believe I've never gotten this before. It's so strong. So yeah, definitely try out the charge beam and huge blast. That is apparently incredibly powerful. I will probably actually finish this season that I wasn't planning to do just because that is so fun. Uh, I really wish there were more things like this, so it has 15 health left. This does, like, at least 15 damage? That is completely ridiculous. Normal shots deal 1, in case you didn't notice. So yeah, this is incredibly powerful. Also, you can do sort of, like, stealthy... You can play sort of stealth-like and uh, get the drop on enemy ships, which is pretty fun. There's so much variety to the uh, combat due to the types of enemies and stuff. Damn it, I took damage. Taking health damage always feels bad. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I figured if I mentioned these guys, probably my least favorite normal enemy. And there's actually an even worse version of them. These aren't the worst. There we are. Of course, you can make pretty short work of them with this gun. Um, but yeah, this is Galaxy. I do recommend it, though uh, you might just want to wait until Season 5 is out. Ooh, the assault muzzle is one of my favorite. Actually, though, with this gun, I kind of want the precision muzzle. Because that should actually add even more crazy damage to this ridiculous thing. Let's see how much you have 19? So, what is that? 16 damage? It's crazy. But yeah, I definitely recommend it. Um, its main problem is that, yeah, technical issues, season 5 not out yet. So you kind of may as well just wait until they work out. Um, season 5 is definitely coming. I hope the performance issues continue to be fixed. Uh, they have patched it twice now, so, you know, it's not like they've abandoned development or anything. Um, oh yeah, this, I'm playing on, damn it. The review copy is on PS4. It's currently PS4 only. It's coming to PC a bit later. It's a Sony pub fund game, so, uh, I hate when people complain that pub fund games aren't on PC first. Because, I mean, Sony paid for the game to be able to be finished. Like, generally, pub fund games would either not be done or not as, you know, not as good if not for the money. So, I mean, aw, oh, crap. Well, the good thing is that since I died incredibly stupidly there, we get to see um, the comeback mechanic. If you get five of those random crash dropped crash tokens, we get to replay here. And you go on a recovery mission where you can, um, you start off without any of your abilities, including the mech. You don't even get the mech. And now we have to sneak in and get our abilities back before we do our objective. And so that's pretty risky, especially in these later areas, because uh, we are at a significant advantage without our buffs and the mech. But uh, it's mostly just a little bit of punishment for dying, which you're not supposed to do, you know, obviously. So, let's take a... Oh, the title and the written by are also random, which is a cute little touch. I mean, they do a decent job with the, you know, anime, the 80s anime feel, but uh, it just feels like there's more they could have done, but didn't do. Finding that recovery crate is your top priority, kid. Without it, you're a sitting duck. Alright, so our recovery crate is almost always guarded by tough enemies. And now we got our stuff back. <laughs> this gun is so ridiculous. Damn you. 
Also, if you deal enough damage, you actually the shot actually goes through the shield a little bit. Oh dang, shield capacitor is actually an incredibly good item. Um, that actually adds one real shield, not overcharged shield. So, very good to have that in the shop. <laughs> also, it should be noted, I have... I've beaten four seasons and the... How do we get to that? Ah, stop. Doing that. Okay, that was annoying. Um, and there's still quite a few career unlocks, like store unlocks, I don't have quite yet. Let's see how many we have. I have most of them. But, I mean, there's still like... What is that? There's more than ten that I'm missing, so... It's quite a variety of items. It's just annoying that... Fairly often, I don't see all of them because of how the shop is managed. This gun is so good. Um, the game is hard. I'm not sure how much I've mentioned this. The game does get quite hard in the last season. Or in the fourth season. I'm sure it's even harder in the fifth season. Um, but the game does a pretty decent job of weaning you in. Starts out fairly easy. Uh, decent. Does a decent job of teaching the controls. The, oh, well, the visuals are sort of lacking in the variety of, you know, different levels. Um, like, there's pretty much just spaceship levels and asteroid levels. Um, I really do love the parallax thing going on here. It does, it gives a really good uh, impression of 3D stuff here. Also, these shotgun ships are crazy dangerous. I really don't like them. Those and the hammerheads, which I think we just saw a hammerhead up there, are probably my least favorite. Oh, we have a whole nother asteroid to do. Alright, we'll call that a video. So yeah, this is Galaxy. Um, it is quite good. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, this... I love this gun. Yes. Uh. Oh! I forget. Did I show you? Damn it. Go away. You can grab enemies and toss them into hazards and stuff. Uh, it's not really a good time to be doing this, but... Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's... V ah, that was really bad hitching. Yeah, it's very satisfying to throw enemies into stuff. Oh, and these guys. You can catch stuff and throw them into... Yeah, watch. Nice. That is very fun to do. So yeah, the mech isn't entirely useless, even though I've barely used it in this video. Uh, it just depends on your playstyle. The game supports a decent enough amount of playstyles, so, uh, yeah. I said I was going to stop the video. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. If you hit enemies against the wall hard enough with the sword, it stuns them and does extra damage to them, so that's one of the better reasons to use the, uh, the mech. Not today, spider. Yeah, this is Galaxy.